Good morning. This is Pastor Phil Russell on this wonderful, beautiful Saturday morning with breaking news concerning missions. We are thankful here at Global Awakening Fellowship and Institute to bring you some news from this week and these uh, days in which we live. So m many things, so much is happening, and uh, we just want to bring you some updates of things that are happening around the world concerning Christians, concerning the church, concerning uh, these challenging, chaotic times. So we want to uh, bring you some news. We'll have some prayer. And uh, I, I pray these uh, broadcasts just are enlightening, encouraging, challenging. Some of these reports are just heartbreaking, but it's the day in which we live, and we must, uh, as people of God, we must be aware of what is happening all around us. As believers, we understand that we're living in the last days, but also we're living in the time of harvest, and this what is what excites us here at Global Awakening we, we're believing God for a tremendous end-time awakening, revival, a tremendous bringing in of the harvest. That's why we're engaged and involved in missions and have partnerships with various uh, uh, groups and men and women of God in places around the world. But I think it also motivates us to be in prayer and in intercessory prayer and I have some, a couple of news items here that's very, very disturbing, but it's happening in many, many places around the world. And uh, it, it comes from Mission Network News, and Egyptian Christians attacked by Islamic extremists. And uh, this is the news uh, of, of what is happening there. In, in the run-up to the May 5th Orthodox Easter celebrations, extremists attacked a Christian village in Upper Egypt and set fire to several homes and a new church building. Many Christians have received threats from extremists over the construction of a new church building in that part of Egypt. Although they appealed to the police for help, none came. Then on Tuesday night, militants burned the new construction and many Christian homes in the village. I want those of us here in America and places where we're safe and there's uh, peace, these are things that some of our brothers and sisters are going through and are being challenged with. One of the archbishops of Minya alerted the authorities and a spokesman for the Voice of Martyrs Canada says Egyptian security forces received a report about a dangerous wildfire near the construction site of a new church. Many have been subjected to attacks including their homes being burned and being prevented from leaving. They catch these Christians in their homes, they set fire to them, and they prevent them from leaving their homes. This is what some of our Egyptian Christians are going through right now. It's our duty to pray with them. It's, it's, it's hard for us to think of the horrific things that are happening to some of our brothers and sisters. But this is breaking news. You know, we, we can go home and we can sit down at our computer, our TV, or our news feed of our choice, and we can captivate, we can assimilate what is going on around the world, and we can choose what we want to see and what we want to hear. These kinds of stories very seldom come to our attention. Now, if we read the things that 
uh, the Voice of Martyrs puts out all of the great things that they do as a ministry to keep us abreast as Christians around the world and also makes us become conscious of prayer and intercession for these brothers and sisters of ours in Egypt and in other places. This is why we share with you on a Saturday morning the importance of receiving updates concerning the church worldwide. This is a place in Egypt where there's much, much persecution. It, it's, it's a place where the majority of the Christians live. And the village that was attacked here is home to 3,000 families. Now, that's several thousand people. But yet, as Christians, they're in the, uh, they're in the crosshairs of being per, uh, persecuted, killed, driven out, burned in their own homes. God help us. Let's pray for that situation. Let's pray for those Christians. Let's pray that there is a change politically, that there is a change uh, socially and economically and culturally. The, the Bible wants us as, hu as humans to live in peace. Scripture teaches us to do all that we can to live in peace. Now, these people that are persecuting the church have no desire to live in peace, but I can assure you the believers want to live in peace. They are not advocates of uh, terror. They're not advocates of hate. They're followers of Jesus Christ. They're examples of his love. And this is why this type of breaking news is so important for the body of Christ. We're to be aware of these things that are going on. That's happening in Egypt. Now, let me just give you one more thing concerning that. As, as Christians, we need to stand up about our faith. We need to face the reality of what's going on around us. And we're here. We're part of the United States of America from where we're broadcasting. We, we, we have law, we have a constitution, and it has given us freedom to share our faith. But many of our brothers and sisters do not have the freedom and the privileges that we have. So what do we do, those of us in this setting? It is our responsibility to face the reality now, I want to use that phrase right there. As Christians, the breaking news this morning is this. We need to face the reality of what is happening all around us. And when we get the big picture of what the enemy, the enemies of the church is doing, which is instigated by Satan himself, that comes from the darkness of the pits of hell, and his kingdom and places where he dwells and where he operates from. He, he has this full-scale attack against God, against Christ, against the church. But God has given us his word and instilled and imparted to us his power by his Holy Spirit. So we are to be as Christians, as Christ followers. We're to stand up. And we're to speak truth, and truth transforms. And even as we hear these stories about our brothers and sisters in Egypt, we can speak truth, and we know that God will move. He will protect, and he will grant grace into each one of them. Another, uh, in another part of the world, it's... Uh, some Nigerian extremists repay Christian hospitality with murder. I was, so, I was so stirred in my spirit and also very, very sad 
the brutal persecution of Nigerian Christians continues. I mentioned this, I believe, last month in one of our broadcasts concerning uh, the Christians in Nigeria and how they're being persecuted and killed literally by the thousands. But here was some Christians that were being very hospitable to people that hated them, that the people that were extremists, but yet in their love, in their display of hospitality, they came back and murdered them. Now think about that. As a Christian, you it's our tendency. Well, let me say it is our nature because of who Christ is in us and we being followers, followers and disciples of Christ. It is our nature to be kind because God has commanded us to love and he's also commanded us to love our enemies. These Nigerian Christians were doing just what they were supposed to do. What happens? They are murdered because of their kindness and their hospitality. When I read this, and then I began to intercede on their behalf, one of the men from Voice of, Mar Voice of Martyrs was giving an interview, and he said, we the Christians have raised our voices against the demands of these extremists. And we've also called on the international community to look at what is happening here. And I've heard this several, several times, and it seemed like it's coming up more often than it has in the past. This has been happening for many years, but the intensity of these attacks and this extreme activity of attacking the Christians is now being recognized by the international community, which it should be recognized by the international community. But in this part of Nigeria, there's this huge Christian population. The church is alive and well, and they're going to continue to be the church. Breaking news is that the church, even when persecuted, will thrive, will be faithful, will continue to be steadfast, even if they have to go into hiding, even if they have to meet secretly, even when they're being pursued and attacked, and when they are, when their hospitality is, is repaid with murder. That ought to spur we Christians on to greater prayer, to greater determination, to intercede, to become involved, to become a voice for our brothers and sisters that are paying the ultimate price with their lives, with their families, being burned, being murdered. It's something for us to be very, very, very concerned about. The thing that stirs me with a, and I'm just going to be honest with you, that stirs me with a righteous anger is the fact that it seems that officials are not interested in intervening. That shows you the climate of the politics. It shows you the influence of these extremists. And when all of this kind of thing is happening and those in power do not seem to be interested, there's one thing we can do as the church. That is this, we can pray. We can intercede. We can contact our officials, 
our state officials, our national officials. We can make phone calls. We, we can send emails to, break, to bring awareness to our brothers and sisters in Nigeria and their conditions. God help us to do that. What does a Christ-like reaction look like to this kind of situation, to this type of situation? One of the people on the ground gave a profound statement, and it had to be unctioned by the Holy Spirit in this person that responded. He said, our response must be one of love. Think about that. I mean, that, I don't know about you, but that, that breaks me, that, that causes me to experience some deep emotions. To be part of the persecuted church there in Nigeria, and yet in all of that persecution, the response is that we must respond in love. I pray that that is our response. I mentioned that I have a little righteous indignation and anger on behalf of this uh, situation, and I honestly do, and you know, you would like to fix it. But all of these thousand miles away, we can't be there literally on site like some are. But there's one thing that we can do right from where you are at your kitchen table, sitting right there in your living room right now. As you hear this, as you experience this breaking news concerning our brothers and sisters in Egypt and in Nigeria, you can stop just for a few moments and by the Holy Spirit, pray and pray prayers that moves on behalf of these believers that are so dedicated, that are so committed to loving those who hate them that want to destroy them. I pray that we would choose this as they do every day. They don't have an option. He went on to say, I don't have a, any other option. The only thing that we can do is but to love. What a powerful, powerful testimony. I pray that here on Breaking News that you would choose and you would be able to say, my only option is to love and to love as Christ loved, to pray for those that despitefully use us, those that would hate us, those that would destroy us if they could. But thank God for our freedoms here in America, but many of our brothers and sisters all around this world do not have the blessing that we have. So may the breaking news from Egypt and Nigeria spur us on to do the will of God and to pray in these days and these hours in which we live. Father, I thank you that we're able to come to you with our breaking news program here from Global Awakening. It's such a privilege and honor to share the news, news that stirs us, news that breaks our hearts and causes us to weep and to go into intercession. God, we bring this breaking news to light and to inform the people of God 
all around the world that we must pray and continue to pray. Bless all of those that have joined us today in our breaking news broadcast. Bless them, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you.